Unit 2, Lesson 4, and this is division by radicals. And what it means is that when you have a radical at the bottom of a fraction, we don't like that. The idea of dividing by a third, you know, a number that goes on forever as a decimal, just doesn't sit well with us. So we like to change that. So, what's really simple about it is, for example, if you just take a fraction like uh, 2 over 3, I'm taking up the pen, 2 over 3, right? If I multiply both the top and the bottom of that by any number, okay, by the same number, it always gives me an equivalent fraction, a fraction which has the same value as 2 over 3. So, for example, if I multiply the top by 8, I get 16, and if I multiply the bottom by 8, I get 24, which is the same as 2 thirds. If I multiply the top by 12, I get 24, and the bottom by 12, I get 36. So these are all the same. Once I multiply the top and the bottom by the same, it gives me an equivalent fraction, a fraction of the exact same value, just in a different form. So we can use that to our advantage here. So this one, right? So I'm just going to write it a bit bigger just in case you can't see it. So 7 over root 3. Right? Now, the problem with that is we don't want to have root 3 on the bottom there. Okay? So to get rid of the root 3 on the bottom, we can multiply the bottom by root 3. Because root 3 times root 3 is going to give you 3. But because we're doing it to the bottom, we have to do it to the top as well. So basically, if you look, root 3 divided by root 3 here is just 1. I'm multiplying the fraction basically by 1, but it's just going to come out in a nicer form. So you're going to get on the top then 7 root 3, and on the bottom, root 3 times root 3 is 3. And there's your answer. All right? Let's look at the next one. We have 10 over root 5. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the bottom by root 5 and also the top. Okay, so I'm going to get 10 root 5 over 5. Now look at the numbers. The 10 and the 5, the two numbers can divide into each other, so 10 divided by 5 is 2. So it gives me 2 root 5 is my answer. Okay. Again, this last case here, we have 6 over 2 root 2. Well, I can just multiply the bottom by root 2 and the top by root 2. Okay? Top and bottom by the same thing. So I'm going to get 6 root 2 over 2 root 2 root 2, which equals 6 root 2 over 4. Now, if you look at that, just for the sake of finishing the question, the 6 and the 4 can become 2 over 3. 6 divided by 4 is, sorry, 3 over 2, I mean. Root 2. Okay? Very simple. <coughs> so we're going to look at something slightly more complicated now. This is rationalizing the denominator. So if you look at this case here, I'm going to write it out. We have 7 over 3 plus 2 root 3. Now this isn't just as simple as multiplying by root 3, okay? Because if I just multiply by root 3 on the bottom, I'm going to get 3 root 3 plus 6. So my root, you still have a radical on the bottom. What we have to do is we multiply by the conjugate. So in this case where it's a binomial, 3 plus 2 root 3, we're going to multiply the bottom and the top by the conjugate of the bottom. So remember we said the conjugate is just when the sign in the middle is different. So 3 minus root 3, but we have to do the same to the top. Okay? So we multiply it out. 7 times 3 is 21. 7 times minus 2 root 3 is 14 root 3. And remember what I said happens when you multiply by conjugates? It's the first one squared minus the second one squared. Okay? So... So I'm just going to make a note of that over here at the side. So for conjugates, it's the first one squared minus the second one squared. We did that. So if you square 2 root 3, you square the 2, you get 4. You square the root 3, you're going to get 3. So it's 12, 9 minus 12. So it works out to be 21 minus 14 root 3 over minus 3. All right. Two more quick examples. 
So we're going to multiply it by the conjugate again. So we're going to do root 3 over 1 minus root 3. And we're going to multiply by the conjugate of the bottom. Because it's the bottom that we don't want the radical in. So it's 1 plus root 3 over 1 plus root 3. So multiply across. Root 3 times 1 is root 3. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. And then remember, we're going to get the first one squared minus the second one squared. Okay? So it's going to give you 3 plus root 3, or root 3 plus 3, same thing, all over minus 8. And one final one. We have 3 minus root 5 over 1 minus 2 root 5. Now remember, we don't want the radical on the bottom. The top is okay, the bottom no. So we multiply by the conjugate of the bottom. 1 plus 2 root 5 and 1 plus 2 root 5. Remember, you have to multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. If you want the value of the fraction to stay the same, it's the form of the fraction that will be different. So this one is kind of foil, right? So the top, we're going to do the first ones, 3. The outer one, 3 times 2 root 5, is going to give me 6 root 5. The inner ones is minus root 5 times 1, so minus root 5. And the last one, so minus 2 times root 25, so minus 2 times 5. All over, the first one squared minus the second one squared, so it's going to be 20, because 2 squared is 4 and root 5 squared is 5. So let's tidy it up. So this 2 times 5 here is a 10, so 3 minus 10 is going to be minus 7. 6 root 5 minus root 5 is 5 root 5. All over minus 19. Okay. Now what I can do here to finish this, okay, I can change the signs, because I, don't, I prefer not to have a negative on the bottom, so I'm just going to write that as 19, but it means I have to change the signs of everything on the top as well. 7 minus 5 root 5. Okay, we're done. So that's how you get rid of radicals on the bottom of a fraction.